Let's get the read on a list from former Dallas Fed advisor Daniel DiMartino, Booth, Fox News contributor John Layfield, and last but not least, the Wall Street Journal's uh, James Freeman. Um, Daniel, I want to pass along to you some reporting that's come on uh, Fed futures contracts that seem to be anticipating, maybe because of the, the trade rift with China, that the Federal Reserve could be cutting rates and maybe uh, in, in sequence by the end of this year uh, and are pricing that in accordingly. What do you make of that? Well, you know, it was interesting because on the uh, a few days ago, which seems like a lifetime ago, when the market was down over 600 points, the market actually started to price in the, the chance of three rate hikes in 2019. Neil, I can't tell you how big of a shift this is compared to where we were even, let's say, just six months ago. And the, the weak economic data that hit the wires this morning, we've seen industrial production decline in three of the last four months. Retail sales came out unexpectedly weak. That was led by autos. Um, in, in fact, auto production declined by 2.6 percent. So we know that there's weakening that's going to actually increase the probabilities that those rate cuts will indeed be coming down the pipeline by the end of the, of the year. The market thinks that, that the Fed funds rate, which is at 2.5 percent, let's call it, the market is pricing for that to be at 2 percent by year end. That implies two rate cuts at least. What do you think of that, James? I mean, that would be not only a 180, but, but, yeah. but, but a big switch in sentiment at the Federal Reserve. Yeah, it seems a little premature to me. Absolutely. Just, I mean, yes, we've got some soft April data. I think still that could change in a dime with one strong report. Yeah, and obviously the first quarter was pretty good, underlying some weakness in that first quarter report too. But overall, you have uh, certainly still a very healthy labor market. Uh, companies uh, looking to hire. We'd like them to be investing more. I think they would be when uh, this trade uh, when this trade fight is resolved. But uh, I think uh, rate cutting probably a little early to think about that. You know, John Lee. It is interesting that the president, obviously, we know closely monitors the markets. And I'm wondering, without making a bow to China on this, by doing what he did with the European Union and Japan, namely delaying auto tariffs for at least another six months, was he following markets? Does he get concerned that, wait a minute, I didn't anticipate this kind of response to, to tough talk on trade? Or, or well, well, what's your view? Well, my view is the same. I, I think the president is uh, very attached to the Dow and the Dow's pr progress. And, and when it falls, he does something generally. Either he's going to say that there's some more sanguine talks about to China, some tra trade deal is imminent, or you do something like we may take the tariffs off of uh, Canada and Mexico for the steel and aluminum, and we're not going to delay the tariffs for cars in uh, Europe. You know, you have car sales down. Last thing you want to do right now is hurt the economy. But I do think this is all the president right here trying to manipulate the Dow. Danielle, uh, if the Federal Reserve is called to the rescue to help lower things, how much lower can they go? I mean, uh, already the Fed has got a wait and see policy here. Would a, 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 a protracted trade struggle change that? Yeah, this is the catch-22, Neil, is, you know, we're, we're talking about two rate cuts by the end of the year, possibly, even with some of the data as strong as it is. But the Fed's only got 2.5 percentage points. That's about half of what it typically has if the economy is headed into a slowdown in terms of ammunition with which to fight a recession. So the, the, the trade war rhetoric simply increases the pressure on the Fed. Uh, but at the same time, there's only so much the Fed can do without going to that next step which is beginning to grow its balance sheet again via quantitative easing, which is obviously something we know that the president uh, has, has been saying needs to be done prior to the election. Yeah, to he level said you're going to have 5 percent growth without quantitative easing. The Federal Reserve is busy there you go. scooping up all those Treasury yeah. notes that can get its hands on to forcibly bring down rates. Um, but Didn't James work Freeman, last time, Neil. I just I wonder. I wonder, James, too, whether a move like that might panic the markets. Like, what does the Fed see that we don't? Well, people might start to say, uh, yeah, we see uh, generally positive consumers, uh, generally right. healthy companies. Uh, what is it that's uh, got people uh, panicked? I would say, uh, look, that uh, if this is true, that we're not going to have those uh, new auto tariffs, if this is true, that maybe we're headed toward taking the steel and aluminum tariffs off Mexico and Canada, uh, this is this is all good news. And you get these trade fights resolved. You don't need to worry about uh, getting the Fed to juice the economy. Uh, investors and consumers take care of that on their own. Real quickly, John Latham, I know my producers are killing me on this, as they should. Uh, but do you get a sense that 
every time there's been a, a, a China-U.S. trade dip in the markets where it, where it looks like things are turning south and don't look promising, but you've been richly rewarded for buying on that dip. Maybe not right away, but I think it's happened seven times now over the course of a little more than a year since we've been dealing with this. Um, is that still a, a good rule of thumb or is it a risky rule of thumb? What do you think? I think it works until it doesn't. I know that it's an oversimplification of it, <laughs> I but like that. You, at some point, at some point, the president's going to cry wolf one too many times that people aren't going to buy it. We're getting more entrenched into this uh, trade war with China, and when the president starts talking about Fed cuts, that emboldens China even more. I think both sides have overestimated their position.